As a musician, nothing says you made it quite like a record deal. What do you say, fellas? You wanna go make a record? Record label deals were the holy grail for musicians. It was the key to their fame and fortune. But over the decades, record deals have turned into something sinister. On the surface, all the public sees is the money, the fame, the cars, the jewelry. But on the inside, the industry is something completely different. Sophisticated contracts are designed to suck all the money out of an artist, while they slave away as debt slaves to the label. And for good reason. If you want to screw people over, you're gonna want to pick the most naive, unsophisticated victims that can't fight back. And let's face it, most artists dedicate their lives to the pursuit of music. Which means they're probably poor. You got a six ball? I don't have a car. And probably not very educated. And on top of that, they have that idealistic drive to spread their art, impact their fans, get rich and famous to prove all their haters wrong. Which means while you're screwing them over, they're gonna work harder than ever for you. And the best part? Thanks to the celebrity culture in America, there is an endless supply of them. But no more if you let me inside your world. So let's learn the art of enslaving artists. Damn me. Who work for who? Absolutely. So the status quo here is artists have been getting screwed since the beginning of time. Where's the value going? It's going into the pockets of the rights holders and they write these contracts that are so convoluted that they essentially strip away every last piece of value and everybody's getting paid except the artist. The artist gets paid last and they get paid the least. The music industry it, it is a joke. They got into ownership equity deals with the streaming services and in, a, in, a, in, a, in an arrangement for them to have an equity position, they agreed to very low rates for the artist's music. One band that we're in is going to make us all this money and be our sole source of income. I think that, that's gone. Every band needs to really pay attention to what their record contract. Still don't get paid for anything we do. And we travel around town to town uh, hoping for scraps of food and yeah, shit. The music biz business plays this Jedi mind trick on you where the whole thing's set up to be rapacious and take advantage of your weakness. It's the 1980s and you're a record label looking for artists to sign. The 80s are seen as the glory days of music for a lot of reasons. There were all these new genres taking off, people were listening to everything from folk music to pop to hard rock, and for artists, life was good. Back then, a record deal was a pretty huge achievement. You would approach an up-and-coming artist, offer them a record deal, and once they signed, 85% of the profits from their music releases and albums would go to you, and 15% would go to them. Sure, it may seem a little unfair at first, but this was before the internet. You couldn't really reach a wide audience on your own. It was hard to tour on a global level on your own. Not signing with a label and keeping 100% of nothing is still nothing. On top of that 15%, artists could keep all the money they made from concerts and merchandise. So it was a pretty good deal. You see, musicians usually don't have good business acumen. They are craftsmen, not business people. So signing with a record label left them free to focus on the creative side, while you, the label, did all the business stuff to blow them up. So back then, record labels and artists had a somewhat symbiotic relationship. There was still plenty of bad stuff going on, but record labels served as a legitimate engine to getting music out to the masses. But then came the internet, and it changed everything. Napster says it's willing to pay to play, but will consumers stay loyal? The latest software makes it a bit too easy for students to access their favorite tunes. Legal troubles over copyright infringements aren't slowing down Napster. The song swapping company is now in the top 50 list of most visited sites on the web, according to Media Metric. Popular internet sites for downloading music. A federal court ruled Monday Napster must stop allowing music fans to swap copyrighted material. It's time for Napster to stand down and build their business the old-fashioned way. They must seek permission first. At first, it looked like the internet was going to make life hell for record labels, not artists. Suddenly, people could download pirated versions of songs off the internet or watch music videos online. CDs, vinyls, radio stations, and TV channels like MTV became obsolete. No one was going to wait hours for a TV show to play their favorite song if they could just stream it online. And no one was going to buy a CD for $10 to $15 if they could just pirate the songs for free. Everyone was losing money, but at least artists could still make money from things like touring and merch. Record labels were in serious danger, and it wasn't about to get any better. 
after the nightmare that is the internet came YouTube and online streaming apps like SoundCloud and Spotify. It made it a million times easier for people to access music for free or as little as $5 to $10 a month versus $10 to $15 for a single album. It's hard to describe just how much damage the internet caused to record labels. They have been hemorrhaging money. But at least now, people weren't straight up pirating music as much. Back in the 80s, 95% of the revenue in the music industry came from CD sales. So CD sales were propping up the entire industry. Now, 75% came from streaming. So the question became, how do we, the record labels, get a cut of that streaming revenue so it doesn't just go to streaming platforms and artists? And finally, you hatched an idea. A way to get back to the good old days when you were making millions. But this time, it was at the complete expense of artists. As a record label, you had a lot going against you in the early 2000s. Your solution? Create a new kind of record deal that would make up for the loss in CD sales. So you found a way to legally take as much control of their lives as you wanted. Enter the modern day record deal. No longer was it a symbiotic relationship. According to these new record deals, once an artist signed, record labels got ownership of both the masters and publishing rights. This means you own the rights to the actual music they created, plus the rights for them to perform this music at concerts online pretty much everywhere. This would be kind of like the equivalent if I signed with some YouTube agency, and they owned this actual video instead of me. Now you weren't just making money from album sales, which was now non-existent. You were making money from every single aspect of their music. If they sang at a concert, you cashed in. Performed at a private party, you cashed in. Had their song played on the radio, you cashed in. Artists didn't have creative freedom anymore. With so much money at stake, you got everyone involved to make sure that every song they put out would be a global hit. That's why today, it seems like the majority of the biggest songs sound very similar. It was a race to make money, not art. And the best part of it all, all that money being made from having international hit songs and albums, millions of streams online, and dozens of concert appearances every year, well, most of that money wasn't flowing into the artist's pockets anymore. It was flowing into yours. Yeah, so if, if you sign a deal with a label, uh, they basically own your rights. So it's really up to them what they pay you. And in most cases, they take 90% of the money. So everyone takes their cut. And then at the end of the day, Artists are left with less than a tenth of less than a half a penny per play. This is Andrew Antar, a lifelong musician and the co-founder of a music streaming startup called Tune FM that's looking to change all of this. When online streaming platforms like Spotify came around, things got even worse. So you can't just sign up and start uploading your masters to Spotify. They don't really have that. The whole Spotify for artists thing is just for the social engagement and like posting pictures and text, not the actual music. So the rights holder is really still in control there. And once they do, you take pretty much all their money. So what they do is they use distributors, so digital distributors. They push out the song to every platform like Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, yada yada. And so they do these blanket license deals where 70% of the revenue from the streaming service goes directly to the rights holder, the labels and the publishers. And then they decide to pay out the artists and the other producers and the, the songwriters um, based on the deal terms that they sign. And generally, these are the sketchiest deal terms you could possibly find. In many cases, a lot of these songs are written by one guy, produced by another guy, and then performed and sung by another person. So everybody has to get their cut at the end of the day. Now for you, this whole setup seems great and all, but what's gonna make an artist fall for it? What's gonna make them eager to sign away all their money? Well, part of it is that record labels are still the gatekeepers like we just talked about. But another reason is something called the album advance. The way that I believe in this, because you have a unique talent, Eric, very special. Don't fuck around. First off, you promise them the world. You play up their ego, you tell them they're gonna be the next Beyonce, the next Justin Bieber, the next Drake. You make them think that you're the only label in the world that can get them there. So like, what's the, uh, what's like the pitch they give artists? Like, like how do they sell the dream? Yeah, just like the VC says, we're gonna make you millionaire, billionaire 10 times over. They, the, the labels say the same thing. We're gonna make you huge. You'll be on the top 10 spinning on the radio. You're gonna be doing all the headlines of all the festivals and this and that. We're gonna make you rich. We're gonna make you famous. And it's a very hard thing to turn down. And then you see, oh, wow, this is a big company. They're a public company. You know, they have all these other artists. You sort of trust all the social proof behind it. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of people who are not making music who are taking all the money. Remember, most artists are broke. 
So you just gotta offer them something they crave just as much as fame. Immediate money. Most of these artists have heard rumors of signing bonuses in the millions. So when you offer them $500,000 as what's called an album advance, it makes them feel like they finally made it. But unbeknownst to them, the album advance is actually just a loan. A loan they have to repay with money their music generates. But to an artist that's broke and doesn't know anything about business or finances, the album advance, that half a million dollars might as well be as good as cash. Here's how it works. A new artist comes along, and you offer them $500,000 to sign with your record label. Most of these artists will sign right away without reading anything, because again, they're broke desperate with half a million dollars staring them in the face. You promise them they're gonna be millionaires, that they're gonna be an A-list celebrity, while you conveniently skip over the clauses in the contract about how they sign the rights to their music and performances over to you. They'll only be getting 20% of all the money their music makes, and you justify it by telling them that all these other famous artists got the same deal. You show them the math, that once they're famous, even that 20% is gonna be worth millions upon millions. So they sign a deal, get the 500k, and eventually they realize the truth. You see that 500k you offered them isn't a bonus or reward, it's literally like a check you would get if you raised money for your startup. They have to use that money to make music videos, hire and pay their managers, lawyers, producers, create merch, promote their music, and on top of all of that, they need to budget to live their daily lives. $500,000 seems like a lot, until you realize that one good music video can set you back almost $300,000. And even if they manage not to buy a new car, iced out jewelry, or designer clothes, that $500,000 could take years to pay back. That's because out of all the money they generate, only their 20% cut goes towards paying off the loan. That means their music has to make $2.5 million just to pay off a $500,000 loan. And until that loan is paid off, they're not going to see another cent. For the artist and performer, it could be six months to a year or more before they see basically a pittance of what the money that came in that they generated on these, these streaming platforms. You could be making millions of streams, generating millions of dollars for all these platforms and rights holders and be getting paid you know, less than 100K, less than 50K, less than minimum wage uh, for the value that you're driving. And that 2.5 million? Well, that's gonna take a little over half a billion streams on Spotify to make. That is the number of streams global superstars get, not new artists. So the cycle just continues. You offer an advance, they have no choice but to take it to survive, and they end up owing you even more money. The life of a signed artist is a life of indentured servitude, except for the few that blow up. At least before COVID, artists had concerts to pay the record label back faster. Labels were confident that artists could pay them back. But then all that dried up with COVID and the pandemic. Now all the shows got canceled for like years on end. And so now they're actually making no money. So the notion of the starving artist is a truly real thing. Post pandemic, however, it's looking a lot more grim, which gave way to the next innovation by record labels, 360 deals. What do you do when concerts aren't an option anymore? You take over every other aspect of the artist's lives. Enter the 360 deal, a record deal where you can take money from every single revenue stream of an artist. Start a fashion line, you get a cut. Create a perfume, you get a cut. Start a cooking show, you get a cut. Every single cent the artist is making directly or indirectly from their music or influence becomes yours to exploit. Now artists aren't just signing the rights of their music away. They're signing their literal lives over to the record label. And for you, life couldn't be better. And at the end of the day, the founder or the artist in this scenario becomes an employee of the funder. So they, they might give you 1500k to, to put into a new album and all that goes to the recording studio and the producers. You don't actually get any of that in your pocket. And artists have to take it because they don't have any other money otherwise. So they're taken advantage of. They're in a position of weakness. And sure, if you're an A-list celebrity, you can make money even if the deal is sleazy. But even major artists like Kanye West and Taylor Swift have had enough of being owned. A-list, we're talking about literally hundreds of millions of streams. Then these guys can be making like what could be seen as decent money. Mm. Um, but then they even get pissed off and then they start to break their contracts with their labels. So you look at Taylor Swift and Kanye and, every, and Radiohead, they're all saying, you know what, like, we should be making tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions, not a few million here and there. And But we're talking about 0.0001% of all the artists that are even licensed and then even less than all the artists around the world. And by now you might be wondering, if record labels are so scummy and artists end up with so much debt from signing, why don't they just do it themselves? Because one, the current music industrial complex makes it very hard. Two, music still takes a lot of money to produce. But on top of that, the current financial system also makes it very hard. 
To pay artists directly, we would need micropayments, like paying a fraction of a penny per stream. And being that fiat charges giant transaction fees, it's not possible to make micropayments in fiat. That's where something called TuneFM comes in, which is basically the Web3 version of Spotify that's actually live and working. TuneFM is essentially Web3 Spotify, or decentralized streaming platform. And very soon we're launching the number one music NFT marketplace in the world, aka OpenSea for music. And we're the only ones with the technology that's necessary. So lossless streaming, masters, we have no DMCA violations for people just uploading an MP3 of Jay-Z or something. And we have where you actually buy the NFT is where you can enjoy it and play it. So vertically integrated streaming platform, all the social networking and tooling and everything that you would need from the payment layer with the Hedera tokens that are native. So we're trying to change that by going direct, cutting out all the middlemen. There's more than one, there's many of them. Pay artists 10 to 20 times and sometimes up to 100 times more if they're independent. TuneFM already has artists like Beyonce on there and it's run on their native jam token which is based on something called Hedera Hashgraph, an enterprise-level distributed ledger technology owned by Google, IBM, Boeing, and much more. This tech is already working for these giant companies, and it actually allows for fast and cheap microtransactions, unlike Fiat or Bitcoin or Ethereum. That means whenever you play a song on TuneFM, the artist gets paid immediately. It even allows you to make money by listening to songs on TuneFM. So you could actually make money as a curator and also as a listener, basically get paid to play other songs that are being promoted by artists. So as a curator, if you're helping surface new music or as a discoverer, if you're helping listen to new promoted music, you can actually get paid and be a, a net um, creditor or hypothetically even break even. But then of course you can always buy jam, but then you don't have to worry about it. it's not a sunk cost because then you can go ahead and sell jam for potentially even more money or whatever the market price will bear. So you're never losing. So if you want to participate in this music revolution, Tune.fm is giving you guys 100 jam coins for free to give it a listen right now when you go to Tune.fm with the link below and sign up. Everybody just sign up at Tune.fm, go there, get your free jam tokens, your starter tokens. It's sort of like a crypto jukebox, if you will, that you can actually make money with, uh, like a music game. And uh, we're offering an experience that's even more invigorating and better than Spotify will ever be and just follow us and you'll see all the things that are coming in the pipeline and uh, support artists directly when, so when the music gets played, the artist gets paid. You have nothing to lose by giving it a try. So go to tune.fm with the link below to claim your free 100 jam coins right now. Thanks to Tune.fm for sponsoring this video.